Right, I've got this thing from Banggood. Thank you much Banggood for sending this to me at no cost. This is a cool little toy. This is a laser engraver. It's supposed to cut some materials as well, but it's laser cutters, quite high power devices. This is a lower power device. You can do engraving with various materials with this thing. So here's the instruction manual. We're gonna sit down, gonna put it together. We'll try it out, see if I can get the thing working on my Mac. Apparently I can, there's some software called Lightburn, something like that. I'll try and see if I can get it working on the Mac. Obviously it's PC software, which is actually for this thing, so, but you know, that's a main option if you want a PC. There's instructions on how to build it. Yeah. So this is what it's supposed to look like in the end. This freestanding frame. There's a QR code there for you to scan if you want to try and look at it more. You can probably scan it off the screen. Instructions for assembly. Other bits and pieces. How to use it, that sort of stuff. So anyway, we'll have a look. We'll figure it out as we go. So the first thing we'll do is get all the bits out, see what we've actually got here. And um, we'll just pile it all up on the desk here, get it out of the box and muddle our way through. Alright, so these little bits that are in the box, I'll just basically just drag them out and slid them onto the desk. So <laughs> we've got some kind of gantry frame here, which I think basically goes on there. That's right, so it goes this way up, or that way up. That way up, I think it is. Now, we have instructions how to assemble this thing. Now, the thing with instructions is that well, I don't read them. Have a power supply. Use a two-pin connector, figure eight connector. Power cable here, which requires a death adapter, which is fine. I've got a bunch of these laying around already because I keep buying stuff from China. Ideally, you get the correct cable and replace this with a one for your jurisdiction, your area. For, for testing purposes, this will do for me. For not, I probably don't have the correct cable around somewhere. But stuff that to one side. Have a micro USB adapter, got a black perspex been pre-cut something, got these red ones, or well, a red one there, and another red one over here which has got the controller on the back of it, you've got some hardware, some more hardware, some glasses, now the thing with these laser cutters and engravers, you're dealing with lasers which can blind you if you're not careful, so disclaimer. Using lasers is dangerous. Use them at your own risk if you're going to do one. Be extremely careful. Do not look at the lasers. Make sure you get safety glass stuff on. These ones come with it. Obviously, they're designed to use with it. I've actually bought some higher quality ones as well, which I'll use properly main time later on. So I also have to be careful when I'm doing this demonstration that I put this over my camera lens up here. To make sure I don't accidentally damage my camera whilst I'm not looking anywhere near it I'll be looking away and holding this over the camera lens right so just be clear, clear on that here is the actual laser assembly in here this is supposed to be a 20 watt version but I believe that the rating is actually 20 watts of input power not output power I think they're actually more like five or five and a half watts something like that in reality so but it uses 20 watts of input power oh and also USB cable to go as well which is a standard USB mini type cable so we'll put the bits we don't need right away to one side and we'll put it together and we'll do this without instructions because I'm a real man. My wife might let me say that if I'm lucky. So the next thing we need to do is figure out how to put it together. Um, I've got various bits of hardware here. This is like a foot which goes on one end, I know that much. And that's the foot that goes on the other end and this piece goes on here somehow. Let's um, figure out what hardware we've got here and put it together. Oh, um, yeah, so I think I figured out how to do this bit. These like nut pieces go on the top here with some extra fasteners and we've got some bigger fasteners here which I think would hold the feet on the end. So I'll start by putting the feet on because I think that's a sensible place to start whether it's the right place to start, I don't know. It's a bit of a weird thing, you've got this, the belt securing in here. It's, it's actually quite a clever setup. So you've got the belt which is strapped in at each end here, it's like secured down with these you know, clamps I suppose. And you've got these pulleys, or the roller bearings on here, and it just runs around them. It's a pretty clever design actually, it's quite nice. Really simple and effective, it's quite good. These will probably have concentric nuts on them, I'm not sure if they actually do. They may not. For adjustment? I don't know. Anyway. So we'll put this on, we'll put my foot on one end, then with the other one. So these little small bolts I'm not sure about, anyway. Let's just stick one in there, there'll be a hole there somewhere, there you go. Actually, you know what I should do? I should peel the film off first, shouldn't I? I don't know why, but whenever I use a marker pen, I always end up with a pen on my hand. I don't know why that is. It happens every single time. 
<clears throat> anyway. And this piece here is, I think it's a spacer from what I can see. Where did I see this went? I think it goes on here. So I think it goes over that like that. So it's just step it off so it's not actually resting on these mounts here. I think that's all that's for. Check this out. So they mounted this up here and they haven't actually taken the film off themselves. I've got to pull this apart again to take all this protective layer off. That's a bit of a pain. Probably only a couple of screws though. Yeah, let's take it apart. Look, this is what my face looks like. In case you haven't seen it before. You may not have done because a lot of times all you see is my hands or my arms or maybe my stomach. Sometimes you get crotch cam. I'm not sure that's a good thing. It's a self-tapping screw. That's curious. What have I done here? Is that the screwed into the board? It is. It's a screwed into the board like that. It's not actually... Hmm. Interesting. That's an interesting design. Instead of using a nut and bolt to you know, clamp it onto the board, it's just got a self-tapping screw that goes into the board. Hmm. I'm not sure that's a great way of doing it myself. Alright, let's go back to this stage where we were at before. So, as I was saying before, the laser radiation you get is fairly dangerous, so make sure that you are careful if you use these things. Um, I'm sure it says that in instructions, ones I haven't read, obviously, because, you know, I, I'm a real man. No. <clears throat> That's my wife. I don't think she's here. It's okay. Be careful with lasers. I'm going to keep repeating that because it's super important. Because I don't want anyone that buys one of these things to end up blinded or have their eyesight damaged because they haven't been careful. So that's why I'm going to keep on saying that. Be careful with lasers. So this goes on here like that. I'm not sure about the whole side face view thing. I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure like that. Shows up my nose quite nicely, you know. My, my Ski ramp nose. Right. So let's just try and make sure these are actually sitting level for a tighten that. This one right down. As long as it wind up wobbling. Will be a little bit of playing things. It's nice to include the Anki as well, although I don't really need it, but it's nice to include everything you need. So that's that bit done. Now I should actually look at this board and I should show you that a little bit, shouldn't I? Before we go any further and it gets a bit clumsy to deal with. Let's get close up. So there is the board. As you can see it's got a ESP32 on there. Room 32E is the module name. You can probably just read that on screen. SD card up here. It comes with a micro SD card which is a 128 megabytes. Nothing massive is it? I don't suppose you can buy them anymore. It's got some other module here. I'm not quite sure what that is. It's like a little buck converter or something. Maybe a boost converter. Um, obviously power supply section around here, it looks like a voltage regulator, is that 3.3 watt regulator there, looks like, maybe it is. Obviously an 8 mm old chip there, wherever that is. Can't read it from here. Some probably, these are probably output drivers. And obviously the interconnects for various things, power input. So I think if you only power it from the USB, you can only power the controller. It won't power the laser, obviously, because it's just too strong. You need to use this connector here to power the whole thing. So make sure you consider that aspect when you're using the thing, otherwise it won't work. So I don't actually know if I'm building this in the same way the manual says to do it. I probably aren't. And not. Um, so this has to go this way up. Onto there. We've got this other hardware over here. And we've also got these two small screws there. And we've got a couple more screws in there which I don't know what they go to yet. They're probably for the laser mounting. So we shall clamp these on first. I'm sure I mentioned the instructions that I haven't read. <coughs> actually, I haven't read them, to be honest. I just showed the manual to be funny. I haven't actually read them. I'm just thinking it should be pretty simple to put together. I'm fairly mechanically minded, so figuring out something like this, not too complicated, really. Um, generally, as long as I've got it right, then yes, it won't be too complicated. Let's tighten these up. So we've got two longer screws here with some nuts that go on the other side. We've got these short screws here. And the question is, can I figure out what these ones do? Mm. So here we have a laser. Caution, avoid eye or skin exposure to direct radiation away from children as well. It's got a little fan on the end there. Here's the model on information in case you want to see this. 12 volt, 2 amp max. 
rated power 20 watts, optical power 5000 milliwatts, so it's actually a 5 watt laser and it's 450 nanometers wavelength. Depending on the wavelength, it depends on what materials you can cut as well, so it's actually maybe a consideration to even swap the laser out if you try and do maybe different materials which require a different wavelength because I think clear acrylic for example will need a different wavelength and better cut it. This one I do coloured acrylic, things like that, so I think it's something you have to consider around. Research a bit. I haven't done a lot of research on this. I've got no experience with laser colours or lasers and gravers, so it's all new to me too. Okay, so let's look at some theories about how this all goes together. So we've got these little screws, little bolts. We've got this assembly here, which is going to go onto there. So we've got what screw holes mounts? This one here and this one here. The two extreme ones are the ones which line up. Actually, the middle one lines up too. So we've got a few. There's three bolt holes that line up there. I'm looking at this mount here. The holes inside here are larger than the hands of the cap screws. So the cap screws don't bolt through this directly on this piece at least. So it's like you have to attach this to this mount, then attach that mount to this plate. Okay, we'll do that. So which one's which? I'm guessing we use the short screws through this one, do we? So look, that looks like it's going to protrude far enough. So let's put this together. So far so good. Second screw, we'll put it through the other extreme end. So it's the further apart they are, the more accurate it's going to be for mounting and the less wobble you should get and that sort of stuff. Um, in theory, but that's not going very far. There's something screwing a little bit. Why is that? There's something else in there. It's a securing screw, so I can't use that mounting hole. So I have to use this one up here. Okay. As I was saying, ignore that. Use these screw holes here. Now, it's got a little grab screw inside there, which is obviously part of this assembly. I mean, technically, yes, the further away it is, the better. It's mechanically more sound to be further away. Now, this has got a bit of play in this, because if you don't get it straight, see that movement in there? If you don't get it straight, then what's going to happen? It's going to um, potentially reflect off more instead of being penetrative. You know what I mean? So I'm going to try and get it between the two points, which is about there. I did that bottom catch scraps, has got a bit of drag. And we'll just see if this looks like it's kind of straight. Yeah, it looks about right there actually. It looks okay. Okay, so just a little bit more drag on each one. Otherwise, what happens when you turn one of the cat screws, it could actually spin it. So I just turn to both of them, increase the tension on both of them. I get that cat screw back out. Right. That's there. Yes, I'm probably being a bit fussy, but that's because I'm mechanically minded. And I do think about mechanics of things and how things go together, and sometimes it actually matters. You know, being fussy about things does matter. So that will sit through those holes like that. Great, now we've got these ones we've got to put on. Now where do these go? Well, so I think it's got to go through here like that, and then have this mounted on the other side. So I'm just going to shove this on here. I think this is where it's supposed to go. And get the screw on, because the threads aren't wonderful. And again, you've got play potential there. So you've had play in one side of this, and it's tipped, say, like that, a little bit, obviously exaggerated, on that plate. And then you do the same thing again on that plate between this plate. Your laser could actually be on quite a big angle. And you don't want that because it will affect the accuracy and everything. So you want to make sure it's dead vertical. That does matter, that kind of thing. So we'll shove that one through there and do the same again. Right, so what I'll do is I'll put a bit of drag on these again like I did the first time. So it's got some kind of tension. So it will still move a little bit. It's almost nothing there actually. It's not that bad. Probably more playing a carriage actually, I think that needs adjusting. No, that's not too bad, she's almost no playing a carriage, just a slight little bit. The I could probably get where tie nose up there. Now the thing is I don't have a right angle like a, a set square thing here to check the accuracy of that, but I do have a big PCB ruler, which should be fairly close. Yeah, it's not looking bad actually. Try the other side. No, it's tipped very slightly. I think we've got to tip that over a little bit. It's not quite dead vertical. Probably want to follow you now. I think it's relative to the surface, not necessarily re relative to the gantry. So, yeah, that's looking alright. Close enough. So now I'm going to tighten these just to make sure it's locked in. Same deal, just a bit of tension on each one first and then lock it right up after that. Would have been nice if this was more aluminium parts than, than plastic. You know, these could be aluminium. But I suppose this is a cheaper way of doing it, isn't it? I suppose it means you can buy the thing for a cheaper price. Yeah. 
doesn't really matter that much. This will be fine. So that's that assembly done. Now we've got to do some connections. So we've got this flex here, which mm, goes where? <laughs> sort of goes over there. I think I need to do something with this to make this like tied on or something. Did it mention? Oh, uh, hold on a minute. There's like a slot here, which I think might be like a cable guide. But I can't get it in there. It looks like maybe I should have actually put that through before that bit. Hmm. So there's a wire gap here, which I think I need to put the wire into in order to secure it. Looks like it's designed to have the cable come through here, like that, to guide it. Which will then come across to the assembly up here. I think that's what they've designed in. So that will go through there. So that'll be popped into that drive like that. And you've got this piece flapping around. I suppose I could put it through there. It might have enough in there, but I don't think it really needs to do it. I think it'll be okay there. So now I need to say, figure out what we'll do with this bit because it's supposed to be, I think, going through these wire guide things over here, which. I think could be in the manual if you've read it. Or you could do that and be smart and do that. And then that's my bad idea. <clears throat> okay. So what I'm sort of looking at now is how this cable here should be secured. Because if it's looping around like this, if the laser happens to come in this direction, it could but if it's sagging, it could potentially get caught. And if it moves over, it could hook on the back end of here or something like that, you know, I could hook over that and get caught. So what I actually think you should do with this, this is my suggestion only, is it correct? I don't know. But if you feed it through this one first from the back side of it, so feed that through there, put it through like this. Right, put a bit of slack out, we'll sort that out in a minute. Pull that back through here, pull that one through, and then we can plug this in and sort this, the actual amount of play out we've got. And that will hide that, that will keep that tucked out of the way. What I've actually done is I popped it down beside the, that side. It actually fits quite nicely inside this channel here between the tops of these nuts and the actual beam. And it actually sits in there really nicely. So it doesn't seem to require any cable ties. It actually just fits nice. So I'll plug that in there. We'll take some of the slack out of this. So we should be able to pull this right to the end, and we can. And there's play in there. This keeps it away from the rollers and that sort of stuff, and then you can move it back. And that's all out of the way. That's just flexing nicely, keeps it out of the way, not going to snag on anything. And that's good. So I can actually probably put a little bit of play back into this end. Just to keep this from pulling too much on the connector. Right, because we've got plenty of play on here, that's fine. You have to make sure it's not tugging. If it's tugging on this, then it might actually cause this to roll backwards and you don't want that to happen. Right, so that's looking fine. Now, you have to watch out for when you move these stepper motors around, because it is moving the stepper motor, and I'm moving this backwards and forwards. Don't do it fast. Do it slowly, because if you do it quickly, your stepper motor becomes a generator, and it will feed power back into your driver control board and potentially blow it up. So that's why I move things around slowly. Just watch out for that. Okay, just if you're not aware of it, consider that's something which you have to be careful of. So that is now built. Um, we've got this little loop. I think it's supposed to just tuck it back in here to get out of the way. Let's do that just to keep it out of the way. That's it. That's done. So that should actually all be good. See if it will go all the way over. It does. All over this way. And it does. So that's all good. That's definitely where it stops. It's hard to stop there because it's hitting on the clamps on the back of the strap there for the belt. So that's the assembly stage done. Right, now I need to try and get the software side done. Mm. Okay, I've got a thing engraving on my desk. Now this isn't using light burn, this is using my phone. So my cell phone is currently sending this to it in the app that's on the iOS system, so that's what I'm using. Once this thing stops, I'll take this filter away so you can see. Here we go. Look at that. Subscribe. Engraved on the desk. But, like I said, I couldn't get Lightburn to work with it. I can't even get the thing to move using Lightburn. I tried every single configuration I could see on there, and I couldn't even get the thing to move around. So. Light burn is like no go. So if I want to do engraving anything other with my phone, then I don't need to use the software on the PC. Anyway, it worked.
it smells really bad, but it works. Right, let's try this through a green filter instead, see if it looks any different. That is really small. <laughs> so this is the app that you get with it. So you can get images built in an album, stuff like that, but you can do a new image. And it's got some built-in demo ones which you can mess around with, but he wants that. So I'll do a new blank one. Just do an edit of that. So oh, I just crashed it. Oh that's the first time. Let's open it again. So if I go works OS, right, connect to that device, there we go, hit a beep connected. So I'm gonna do an edit of this. You want to do text. I'm just gonna do a text on here. You can choose a size. Now the size I've been using before is about 40. So I'm just gonna do 40 again, same size. Just click on that, put the text in here, so I'm gonna put click. Like done, that's what I want to print. Engrave rather. Now for some reason it's saying it's only 8mm by 1mm, which isn't correct. So I don't know why it's saying that. That isn't what I want to do. When I did this before, it's much larger text, so I don't know why it's saying it's only that big. Let's just do something different, shall we? Let's just do like. Does that change anything? Okay. Three millimeters of one millimeter. Now, for some reason, the sizing is a bit weird. I don't know why that is. Because when I did the first one, it came out that big. And now I can't get it. Hmm. One interesting thing I've done is if you like touch the screen and move it around, you can the laser. So you can see where things go. That's quite handy, I suppose. You want to see where the actual laser is going to end up being. I need to get the homing right. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, looks like I found a setting. So in the settings over here, you've got your preferences, and I think that's what was causing the problem. I didn't change the settings, so I'm not sure what happened. So I just made those bigger, and that might actually fix the problem I was having now. So let's try doing a new one. I went, ah! Right, anyway. Um, <laughs> let's do it again. So let's do 40 point. I'm going to do about the same size. Maybe click like. Maybe it's when it crashed, maybe it corrupted it. There you go, click like. Width is 100, height 18. Okay, well, let's go fast. Maximum speed. Can I reduce the laser power a little bit? Okay. And we want to do in a line grey. And we're going to do a start. I'm going to do this in a second. Once I get some filters up in front of the camera. So I'm going to put this filter up. And start. So OK. And start. Here we go. And let's see what comes out. You're afraid you can't see much like that. But, uh, you know, that's what it is. So I do warn you in the manual, which I haven't read about not exposing yourself to fumes. So this room is currently really well ventilated. I've got my little fan going there. And I've also got a window open, door open, which also got a really big breeze coming through from outside right now. So there's, yes, there's a lot of fumes coming off it. And I can smell it a little bit, but it's pretty well ventilated right now. Okay, so that seems to be working all right. But say, this is only off the phone. I haven't got it working off the computer, which is a shame. The PC software, I expect will work fine. But because I'm on a Mac, I always get these sorts of restrictions and difficulties trying to sort things out. So, anyway, I'll come back once it's done. There you go, it's almost done. So, the thing about when you're trying to engrave on plastics is the fumes can be very hazardous. Things like PVC, I recommend as not doing it. A great example is PVC is particularly bad. If you burn it, it gives off hydrochloric acid and hydrochloride gas. So, it's basically mustard gas. So, not good. Exposure to that is not a good thing to have. So if you are doing engraving on plastics, make sure it is very well ventilated. Do not breathe in the fumes, all that sort of stuff. Because if you do, it won't be very nice for you. Maybe not straight away, but later on it could even like, cause you respiratory problems and all sorts of stuff. Anyway, it's done. Click like. And that's an example of the actual software for this thing. So if you're interested in looking at the software for that already, then I think you can download it without the actual um, laser engraver. 
think you can just look at it yourself and have a play around with it. I'm not sure, I don't know if you'd try obviously yet, but uh, I think it's an idea, I suppose. Mm. So there should be links down below in the description for probably a discount on this unit. So go and check the description down below, click on the show more tab down there and it will open up and show you links to this gear on Banggood. And I believe there will be a discount code so make sure you check that out. This is all I've done so far is this. So I'm, I've actually run out of time, I've, I've had this thing for about four weeks now waiting for me to do a review on it so I'm way behind. I had so much work to do so this will be the review video for now. Okay, I may do a full up video later on once I've had a chance to get the PC software up and going on my laptop sitting around somewhere, I don't know where it is, I don't use PCs generally. I'll do some other stuff with that and see what that software is like and maybe try and play with light burn some more, see if I can get the thing to work. It'd be nice if I can get it to work on the Mac. And I'll do a follow video most likely, so make sure you subscribe and click the like button if you like the video. Hopefully this is informative. I mean, you've got these buttons on the side and cover what these buttons do. So this button here is like a power button, you have to hold it down and turn it on. One here which does like an outline, it will do an outline of the area which is going to be engraved and this one actually activates it. Now on the SD card, if you have the default file on there, it says H1, interestingly. <laughs> but I don't actually know what the formats are for this year. It is some kind of G code, I just don't know exactly what it is. But again, you might have to find out. Um, I did try doing an export from Lightburn to see if I could get a file to work. It wouldn't recognise I was pushing this button, it just beeped saying no, not valid. So you probably have to use the SD card exported with um, G code from the actual official software. It's not that surprising, but it would be nice if it was more universal. Well, it seems to work okay. I mean, I've only used that at like 15 to 20 percent. That's that 20 percent laser, that's 15 percent laser. I'll try more materials later on, try some cutting, that sort of stuff. And I'll do a follow up video once I've had a bit more time to play with it, and I've got some more time to play with it as well. So make sure you uh, subscribe to see these in future. I don't know how far away it'll be. It could be a week, it could be a month, it could be a year. Don't know. I don't have any specific uses for this at the moment, apart from engraving my anti-static mat here to help prompt people on YouTube. So I'm sure I'll use it for something at one point. I know in the past I have thought, oh, I wish I had a laser engraver. Anyway, I've got one now. Now I seem to find a use for it. Right, so thanks a lot, Banggood, again, for sending this to me at no cost. Good old Banggood. Check the links out down below. Say there likely will be a discount code. So check that out. Check out the merch. Or because it'll become a Patreon if you're interested in supporting the channel. Catch you later. Thumbs up. And I'll see you in the next one. Where for that may be. Maybe a repair, maybe a review. Who knows? Could be anything. Don't forget, never read the instructions. Never forget.